Okay, we're going to just zip along here now. Uh, got the head done, got the hat done, got his cigarette done. So now we're going to paint his jacket, his shirt, his neckerchief, his belt, belt buckle, and a little bit of the jeans. And here are the colors we're going to be using. This is raw sienna for the jacket. Here's one here, rockwood red for his uh, neckerchief and probably his shirt. And midnight blue for his jeans down here. And it might show up also in some of these other colors. And also we'll be using black and white up here. What white and parchment, maybe. We'll see. So I've squeezed me out a bunch of uh, raw sienna here on my spot here. Get my big brush out again. I've already wet down my my uh, carving piece, so we'll just start laying this paint on here. So let me go ahead and just do this, and then we'll come back when we're ready for the next color, okay? I've got the uh, jacket all painted, and I pulled out a little, little of that asphaltum color that we used on his hair, and put a little out here, and what I'm going to do with it is... Um, we're going to shade... Shade the areas where there will be shadows. I'll just make it look good. I'm going to do this while it's wet. Just makes everything look better. Let's see around these buttons. Flaps. See the difference between the two. This makes the jacket look worn more.
Sometimes I probably use my thumb or finger as much as I do a brush. It's really dark down in here. Around his neck. This'll this will make his head pop out a little more when he gets it on there. Mm, looks pretty good. Now Let's see what I got here. Here's just a light tan. Should take some of that right out of there. here and there. Just to show more wear. A lot of these colors really don't show up until it dries and the piece is varnished. khaki, light tan. They probably have someone sitting in a room in China somewhere come up with all these names that they put on these uh, paints because they don't make any sense half the time. Alright, so I guess the microchip's next. <laughs> what is that? That's my wife's phone.
use this big brush to paint the large areas and then come back with the smaller brush and get the small stuff. Judy, I don't know. I didn't think you had that many friends. It's the same one. <laughs> the same one must be. No, it's just telling me it's there. Periodically. It's not a new one. Take a little, where's my midnight blue? Shading the uh, folded areas here like that just makes it pop out more.
looks good to me. So we're going to take a little break here and let Judy find out who her friend for the day is. Okay, we'll right for back. a shirt, I'm going to use that same purple. Take a little of that there. Take a lot of that here. Take a little brown. Brush. When you get in a tight spot like that, what you do is figure out your brush. See, that's got a point on it, just like all these other brushes do. They all have points, basically. Just take it, lay it down, and just shove it right up in there. And that's how you get into a tight spot. Just a touch of white. Here, I don't need white. I'll use some of this. Now, blue, that blue is a semi opaque color. What I'm going to do is put that tan on there, and that makes it look a little more faded. And then I can take a little more blue. the shadows. There, see? Looks good. Alrighty. Then I can take some dark burn umber. I'll mix this myself. Just sort of a real muddy brown. Deep brown. And I can paint his while you get a little hair right on the end of your brush.
Let me catch that. Actually, I'm going to paint this buckle brown. Hmm? Black. There's that black again. I'm cheap. I hate to throw away paint if there's some in there. And there's a little in there. This is where that point of the brush comes in handy when you're getting in little tight spots like that. Again, just push it, push it in there. Boy, that is hot today. So, for his belt buckle, let's see. Is that a thing of antique gold here? Right there it is. The reason I underpainted it with brown is just to give it a nice base to sit on. If I painted it on there straight, it would have look kind of dead. This way it'll make it nice and antique looking. Looks pretty good. Now with a little bit of that parchment, what I like to do is get all the water out of it. down here where his shirt goes in his pants. Put a little color on there to show where. Maybe down along his shirt.
Looks good to me. Okay, so the figure is now painted. Now what we have to do is we have to wait till uh, till it dries. These these are dry now. There he is, but he's going to look uh, a lot better once he's varnished. Okay, so. Uh, We'll have to wait for this thing to dry, and then we'll come back tomorrow after it's dry and uh, give it a coat of varnish, put it together, give it a coat of varnish, okay? And uh, we'll do that tomorrow with this video, all right? So I'll see you guys in the morning probably or in the afternoon depending on when this is completely dry. So until then, I'll talk to you later. Thank you very much. Okay, he's all painted and dry. So uh, now I'm going to glue him all together. I put him on his base temporarily just to uh, be able to see what he looks like. Dropped his cigarette there. Don't want to put that on to the very last thing. Uh, I gave him a belt buckle. Not a buckle, but a belt. I don't know what you'd call that thing. Clasp. Anyway, just bent out a wire and then uh, put in place. I uh, decided to change the color of the buttons on his jacket from dark brown to gold to uh, be more like a brass brass button, which I imagine it probably was. And I did a little white dry brushing up here on his neckerchief and just a real little bit right here on his shirt just to make things interesting okay so putting 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 him together I use this five minute epoxy find this down at one of the home stores so I'll squeeze me up probably a bunch here because I got a lot of glue in the new We try to get this as close as possible, 50-50, but this stuff is very forgiving. So I don't worry if I'm off just a little bit. Take a toothpick and put it together. Take a little and I'll just wipe it around here down below the paint line. And put him in there. Pull him out a little, make sure the glue's attached, and it is. Might put him back on his base for a bit. This base here is oak. I normally use walnut, but in his case, I just thought oak would be better. Walnut's kind of a high price base, I guess, where oak is kind of cheap. It is around here, anyway. I want to get a good dollop here right in the center. Not so much as it's going to flow out. I used to use wood glue, but anymore lately I would just use epoxy because it dries real fast and I don't have to wait for it to dry. 
and I think it actually glues better. So I've got me a good dollop there. So now I'm just going to quickly put it on there. Put his head in position. Looks good. Now we've got to figure out how to position his head. Now this is the beauty of carving your head separate. Most people, when they use rough outs and stuff like that, they end up with a carving that looks like that. Heads facing straight forward in line with his neckerchief, buttons, the gig line. It's all the same. Well, it's not interesting, to me anyway. Now you sure certainly wouldn't put it over there like that. That looks like he's looking at something down here. It's interesting in a way, but not to us, not to me. So we'll just turn his head around here a little bit. Now, right there, that's getting interesting. Let me line this up, but not quite as much as I want. I want him, I want his head cocked a little, like there. Now that's really interesting to me. Looks good. Something's going on over there. He's a shifty dude. Let me just put his cigarette in here momentarily. There you go. Now he's kind of his head's kind of loose in here right now, but that's all right. It won't be once that glue dries. But uh, after it sets up, now I keep my eye on the glue. It's starting to set up now. It's getting getting a little thicker down here. So once that gets reaches a certain point to where maneuvering it is not as easy as it is right now, I can position it. And what I want to do is I want to move it forward just about like that. Okay? So we're going to let it sit here and wait for that to dry and then we'll go on with uh, finishing him up. Alright, so there he is. He's on there tight Glue's set up. It's hard now. Can't change it now. So the next step is to varnish him. So first what I'm going to do is take a cigarette out. I don't want to put that in there until last. Now when I varnish it, this is what I use. Minwax, polyurethane, clear satin. Minwax, that's the way to go for it as far as I'm concerned. Now when I use a, I go down to Walmart and I buy these cheap brushes, they cost about a buck. A buck a, a buck a penny because it's a one inch brush. They're made in China, like everything else. I get them home and I'll do this to them before I start using them, trying to pull out any loose bristles. Because there's always a couple. Of course any brush will lose its bristles. Hey, there you go, 100% pure bristle from Chinese pigs. So I'm going to take him off the base now. Take him over there. And I'm going to get my holder, put it back on. And I'm going to start painting. Now the reason I use a little can like this is because this stuff will set up like any varnish will once you open the can. So when doing carvings you don't do that many as quick as a guy building furniture or something. So if you don't use it right away you're just going to end up throwing it out. So it's just not economic to uh, buy a quart can. So don't do that. Just go get you one of these little cans. You'll probably end up throwing half of it away. I do. It's kind of hard to get down in that tight spot. Normally. Normally I'd varnish the head and the hat and everything separate, but uh, 
we're moving along kind of quick because I've got other things to do. And besides, old rooster here already has a hat, uh, has an opportunity to uh, to move out of my place here off to a new location maybe. Somebody's interested. Okay. I'm just going to let that soak in. I put a lot up on here just to let it soak in. Okay. Up here in these areas where I did a lot of put paint on pretty strong, it's not going to soak in so much. Telephone. Hi. It's okay. Anyway, I texted Sue. You're still videoing? <laughs> That's okay. We're okay. watching. We're right. watching dogs today. That was, that, was, that was the dog over there. He didn't hear. Mm -hmm. And speaking of varnish again, this will probably be the last that I'll use out of this can. It'll be tossed right after I finish here. But you can see the effect that uh, varnish has on your carving. It's going back, like I mentioned before, to the, uh, the original color of the wood. when it's wet, so all the colors get deeper, which is good. Now, if you were using blow, you'd probably be overcome by fumes about now. Plus, using that stuff you put in your house and shop and family and everybody else in a situation dangerous situation because that stuff lights up by itself if it's stored or old oily rag happen to be laying around. It's just not the there's just too many negatives about it. I'll probably hear about that. A lot of people get upset when they talk about blow. It's okay. There now you can see see the color that the wood of the wood from there to there 
how, how richer it looks. I don't think that unnamed bar unnamed uh, varnish that most people seem to be using gives you that effect. I don't know because I don't use it so. Okay, now I'm going to go uh, clamp this in a vise and it'll dry overnight. But first, I'm going to do something else. Hang on. With a paper towel, clean paper towel. Now, another thing I want to do is when I'm finished with this right here, I'm going to toss this brush because I've used it about three times already and it's starting to get a little stiff. So, out it goes. Got a dollar for it. With a paper towel, not a cloth, not a piece of toilet paper, a paper towel. Lightly. I'm going to go lightly over it and I'm going to wipe off as much of the varnish as I can because most of it has already soaked into the wood. And this will help get rid of most of the shine. And what it doesn't get rid of, I've got a cure for that later on with uh, Tester's Dull Coat, which I've explained in some most of my other videos. It's a modeling, modeling uh, varnish that modelers use to kill the shine on their plastic models. And it works good if you're careful with it. Oh, rooster's looking pretty good here. But if you used a cloth or toilet paper or something like that, tissue, a lot of the filament of the, of the paper will come off. But as long as you lightly use a piece of uh, towel, paper towel, that doesn't happen. And it's also, this is also soft and it'll kind of even out your brush strokes, which is also a good thing. So it's time to keep an eye out for bristles. There's a real fine one right there. So give it her a once over. Looking for those pig hairs. There's one right there. Nope, that's a that's a knife cut. He looks pretty slick. I like it. And I think the person who's interested in him is going to like it too. Oh, 
Okay, so as soon as it dries, I'm going to put his cigarette in his mouth and then put a little drop of super glue in there to hold that. So I'm going to hold him out here where you can see him without all that clutter over there. And I think he looks pretty good. And with the tester's dull coat, which I'm over here. find this in the hobby section or in Hobby Lobby and it's dull coat testers spray lacquer dull coat now this is a lacquer and that is a mineral spirit based uh, I guess that's what they use varnish this doesn't mix with this but if you very lightly, you know, if you have a have a shiny spot, like up here on the hat, this hat's kind of shiny. It'll dull down as, uh, as it dries, but if it's a little shiny, if you take this and shake it up real good, and real lightly just go <laughs> just a little bit of it on there and let it set till it dries, it's not going to do anything to your varnish. And if you don't get it the first time, well come back again and just psst, psst, just a little bit. Hold your hold your can away from it. Don't hold up here and shh or you're gonna ruin your carving. Just just lightly. Just a mist. And it'll it'll kill all that shine. But it'll leave a real nice smooth warm you just want to touch these things when they're done they just look you so nice. if you ever want to sell your carvings one of the best way to sell them is if a person's standing out beside your booth or something and admiring a piece of yours go over there pick it up and give it to them and they're sitting there holding this thing and it's just it's just almost a living object and uh, just might help you cement a cell so anyway I will, uh, once I have him mounted on that mount, uh, base there, I'll take some real nice pictures and put it on my blog along with the la this last video. And uh, you can see how he looks complete with his base and ready to go to town. So that ends this video project. Thanks for following along. Again, hit that red button down there in the lower right hand corner it subscribes in case uh, you get uh, productive and decide to do a new one so until then I'll talk to you later